My name's Steve Barber. I'm a I'm an award-winning filmmaker out of Los Angeles. So I'm actually sitting in my car right now because I, I was trying to get to the Reagan Library but didn't have enough time. So um, I've been really fortunate. I've been partnered with Kelsey Grammer for about 15 years from the TV show Frasier. I've uh, done a lot of World War II documentaries. My website's vanillafire.com should anybody be interested in my film work. Uh, Netflix is the great monster. They came in and they pretty much killed the independent filmmaker. So you were telling me a little bit about your story. You know, you went out, you know, I was looking for funding for films and it just disappeared. It just dried up literally in three months. It was just gone. And I had raised $10 million. So I needed to do something else. And it's, it's funny, you know, uh, sometimes um, success sneaks through the back door disguised as failure. And I had, I had Buzz Aldrin is a really dear friend of mine. I've known him for 25 years. I had pitched him a documentary. Well, he had gotten all kinds of legal problems with his kids a few years ago. It was all over mm-hmm. the papers, blah, 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 blah. And he had to shelve the documentary. I thought it was the worst mm-hmm. day of my life. It ended up being the greatest day of my life because I went, I went for a bike ride, which I'm, I'm going to go do here in about an hour. And I just kind of visioned monuments. And I can't explain to you why. I just visioned it. And I mm-hmm. thought, well, I, wouldn't, I can't do the documentary yet, but I want to do something because, like I said, I'm 62 and I grew up, you know, I was nine years old when we went to, you know, we went to the moon. I, I watched all the moon la- launches and. I said, what can I do? And I said, well, I'm sure somebody has done monuments. I mean, it's the greatest story in the history of the world, right? Mm. None. One. There was one monument at the Capitol, Jack Swiker at Apollo 13, which I had seen filming a movie in 2008. And so I thought, well, so I contacted this guy and I said, listen, I saw your monument years ago. It's gorgeous. If I can go to NASA and convince them to build some monuments, would you be interested? And there was this long pause, right? And I'm thinking, oh, this guy's going to be real proprietary. and He's going to be mean as hell. And that was not the case. He goes, listen, Mr. Barber, he goes, we've been waiting for this call for 25 years. I mean, Jack Swiker <laughs> had been sitting there. He goes, we wow. usually get a lot of calls on our monuments and nobody had ever called us on, on that Apollo monument. So he goes, you're the first guy to ever call. He goes, you get it done, we'll build. And, and that's how it started. So yeah, skipping through all the details, I'm pretty relentless. Made a lot of calls to NASA. Uh, Buzz Aldrin helped me get to the right people. Uh, eventually NASA said, we're not going to pay for it, but we'll give you a location that, you know, which was just huge. I mean, mm. when NASA said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put your monuments in the back. They were going to put them in the back. And then as they saw the work that my guys were doing, they decided to put them in the front. They created this whole moon garden, mm. which is mind boggling. And, and, and where, been, for, the, for those that don't know, where is this? Kennedy, I'm sorry, the Kennedy Space Center. Cool. And so I've got the Apollo 11 sitting at the Kennedy Space Center and for four and a half years now, you know, wow. two million people, two million people here see it, which is and I'm just and what's great about my story is I'm just a regular guy. You know, I make yeah. I make a good living. I live in a rent control apartment. I drive a 2012 Kia. I'm not a man of means. But in America, if you have a, an idea, you have a vision, you know, you don't you don't have to be Richard Branson. You don't have to be Bezos. You don't have to be Bill Gates to do really substantial, significant work. Mm. And that. You know, I didn't have my best idea until I was 57. So there's still hope. If you're 21 and you're floundering, don't worry about it. You got, lot, <laughs> you, you got lots of time. So yeah. I, then I did. A, I raised 750 grand for that. I raised 750,000 for uh, Apollo 13 at the, and then I, I built Sally Ride on the East Coast last year. I raised another 300,000, and now I, I have Sally Ride. I'm unveiling her tomorrow at the Reagan Library. I raised another 300,000. And I know it sounds easy. No, it doesn't. No, and and this is great because, uh, you know, I'm an engineer, so I I come at things from an engineering perspective. We do have, you know, this is is an independent thing. Uh, We have our 3D printing shop that, you know, we've got some entrepreneurial stuff, but I wouldn't call myself a salesman or... Um, it's, it's a skill that I've learned. I worked in retail. I now, you know, work in the 3d printing industry and I help, you know, close sales in, in certain cases. Um, so I know the process, but I know it's not something that's for the folks who are in the STEM side of things, that aspect of working with you, working with humans or selling, or those things are, (laughs) are, they're foreign. So it's, it's good to get your perspective on it. Working with humans as, as Seinfeld would say, humans they're the worst you know it's you know the funny thing is the problem i'm a pretty good sales guy i've been selling for 45 years right the problem with this sell and it's not a problem for me but it's a problem for people i go to is Mm. there's no return on investment it's a different kind Mm. of investment that's what Mm. i tell them i go look this is about god country story legacy and patriotism this is Mm. where you get to put your name on a human being that was so much better than you so much faster so much stronger so much smarter Mm. you know and you get to put your name. It's a legacy piece. You know, I, you yeah. know, and my, my, my pitch is like the air is going to smell better and the 
the birds are going to sound a little better. You know, right. it's just, right. So it's a really it's a challenging sell because there is no return on investment um, mm. in the in the financial sense. But to me, I mean, I can't be Buzz Aldrin. I can't. None of us can. Well, I can't be Neil. I mean, I got to build Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin. I mean, the first crew to go to another world and land on it. Who am I? I'm no one. Mm. But that's the point. It's like I'm not no one i'm the guy that this was my destiny and i know it sounds a bit corny but there's no way that it couldn't have been because nobody had ever done it in 50 years so yeah um yeah i just i couldn't be prouder and that i'm pretty i'm pretty excited right now I'm a little ramped up because it has taken me nine months to get to this moment where you know 24 hours from now i'm going to unveil the sally ride money we're going to have about three or four thousand people at the awesome. reagan library it's just going to be huge and uh it's kind of neat because I'm, it's about 40 miles away from where I'm, I'm in Santa Monica right now. Mm. Uh, Simi Valley is about 40 miles away where the Reagan library is. And uh, this will be the first time I have a monument in the state of California. I mean, I already have it. It's in the ground, but for sales purposes, you know, starting tomorrow right. or the day after I'm going to start working on Ellen Ochoa, the first Hispanic woman in space guy, Blueford, oh, awesome. the first African. -American. So I'm kind of going into diversity now. But because I have a monument in California at a presidential library, I'm hoping, and it's just a hope, a modicum of hope, that this will help, you know, grease the wheels a little bit. 